Do you have RFI coming from your computer monitor? So do I. Let's take a little bit deeper look at uh, what might be done about it. W1VLF. Hey everybody, my name is Paul, W1VLF, and welcome back to the lab. Um, if you been following this channel you know we're doing an awful lot with uh, loops different types of loops um, air core ferrite and this this you know all but but one thing they all have in common is they're all inside they're not remotely located where they're away from noise sources well this morning I was looking at one of the uh, RFI forums and I saw someone uh, posted a um, a, quote, a question looking for RFI quiet monitors. And I said, that's interesting. You know, I've, I've never really spent much time with, uh, with the monitor, you know, looking for noise. Yes, I know the noise is there. And in effect, I, I've uh, determined that it is coming from this specific monitor. Um, and if you think about it, uh, right here I have a, a, a loop antenna. And the computer monitor is maybe only two or three feet away. Um, normally it's uh, six or eight feet away. Here it's about, I don't know, four feet away. Um, I put the uh, monitor on a stand, actually on a tripod with a, with a special ham cam mount that I built this afternoon so that you guys can, can see this, uh, what's happening. Um, but I'll show you how I go about trying to locate the noise, uh, and I use uh, near-field loops. We'll, we'll, we'll go into these more, uh, but not in tonight's video. So, how many of you guys are out there using, trying to DF the FM band, excuse me, the AM broadcast band, or the long wave band, or, you know, something very low in frequency, and there's all sorts of noise sources coming from your house. And you'd find out by unplugging your monitor that hey, that's the source that's really causing me a lot of issues right now. Okay, so, so if you look at the, trans, the monitor as a transmitter, there's a little switching power supply in there, and it's switching at some interval, a few hundred kilohertz maybe, um, it's switching with square waves, so it's got lots of nice sharp edges, which means what? Lots of harmonics, which means... Uh, if it's switching at 250 kilohertz, we'll have one at 500, then 750, and uh, uh, 1,000, and so on and so on. But I, I have figured there's a lot of people using indoor antennas, uh, not all that far from from the computer monitor. So, again, we know that this computer monitor is the the source of our noise. So we unplug it, and the noise goes away. Wonderful. Now the question is. How is that noise getting out? Well, there's three ways that that noise could be getting out of that monitor. Um, it has a power supply, switching power supply in it. Uh, it could be coming out the power cord, uh, the AC line, and going out to the, uh, you know, to the entire wiring of the house. That's a possibility. It could be coming out the video cable and radiating. Also, on that video cable, there's a, uh, a ton of... Uh, a really fast sharp edge for the from the for the graphics card to the monitor so there could be noise there too um, or it could be physically coming out of the monitor itself so I'm going to show you how I kind of located what's going on here and and an interesting effect uh, of course we'll be using the loop antenna and we'll be using for, for receive so we're going to be indoors here you know um, there won't be any really good signals. This is at the bottom of the band, but there will be a really powerful noise signal. And I'll show you some interesting facts about this. And we'll be using these two uh, loops here. So let me set up for that, give you an overall idea of what, how I go about looking at this stuff. And then we'll, um, then we'll go into the uh, interesting anomaly, which might help some of you guys out. I don't know. Anyway, let me set up for that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I'm going to go handheld here for a minute and just give you a couple of shots here. Here's the uh, loop that we're going to be using. I just have a couple of uh, those clips that hold uh, papers and stuff together um, holding the uh, sense loop in there. And we're going to go over here to the monitor. Um, let me back up just a little bit. So I kind of have this thing rigged up here. Um, 
this is going to be the ham cam, the ham cam mount, which uh, because I have to rotate the camera and uh, so you're going to end up. This is what um, I will be doing. I'll be rotating um, the tripod and the monitor at the same time. Excuse me, the monitor, the tripod, and the camera at the same time, so that you'll be able to see the. Uh, effect on that rotating the monitor and the field that's being generated from it has. So let me put this down and let me uh, switch to a, a static camera shot here and I'll show you some of the stuff. Um, we'll, uh, we'll get into it a little bit more. Okay, we're kind of running with re in really uh, tight quarters here tonight, especially with everything I had to do to get this to work but um, here's the uh, the video cable coming out right and here is the um, the AC line cord going over over to the uh, wall plug and there's a possibility that the noise is coming out of this AC line cord and getting into the house wiring and radiated there's a possibility that the RF is coming back out through even though they have a ferrite here and another ferrite on the computer and there's a, pa a possibility that the noise is radiating right out of the monitor in the front of the monitor. So I'm going to switch this around and um, when I tell you that I'm playing with what cable you'll know you'll know what's happening and you'll be able to see what's going on on the screen at the same time. So let me switch this around. Okay, sorry if that's kind of glary. Oh, and the, the, uh, the loop is going to be about uh, four feet away over here on the other side um, on the other side so there's our there's our noise carrier right there at uh, 517 and if you look here at 530 kilohertz there's another one so I'll be peeking up on these and I'll bring this down and I'll get the ham cam in there and that's all there will be from this camera but the rest of it will be from the ham cam in this setup so that I can tell you what I'm what I'm doing well, actually, that's that's not a hundred percent true. Um, so let's look at the level of this, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move around, move these cables around, and see if any if there's any real difference. So that's moving the video cable around. Got my hands all over it. I should be if it's radiating, it should be having some kind of effect. And and I didn't see anything there. And the same thing here on the uh, AC line. No, no big, whoops. <laughs> Don't you just love, love this live stuff? Oh, which one? Okay, gotta wait for the monitor to, to uh, reboot. So, none of those really made any difference. So, I'm going to disconnect the antenna here. And I'm going to go to my near field loop, which is this tiny one inch, one inch near field loop. Okay, and as you can see, the noise floor has dropped to whatever it is, minus, uh, uh, you know, or 15 dB below zero, then S0. Let me, let me actually switch it to, uh, one second here. I'm going to switch it to a dBm scale. Okay, so with this little antenna, this tiny little loop, you wouldn't expect to see much, right? And, and I'll do a video if anybody's interested in the different sizes of these near field loops. So, there isn't any real noise um, being picked up by this ambient noise. So I'm going to go up and down the cable here, the video cable, and nah, there's not much there, okay? Can't can't really see anything there so that noise really isn't coming out of that cable so here's the AC cable so we'll move it up and down on that cable and uh, there's not much not much coming out there either so that only leaves one place where where the noise could be coming from now I know inside this monitor somewhere is a switching power supply so let's make a, a bunch of passes back and forth and see if we can figure out where that is Okay, there's some generic noise there, but not the real big one that we were seeing. So we're going to, I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the bigger loop first. Because that bigger loop will allow us to find out, oh, look at that, there is noise there. Let's go to the other, to the cables. 
not not really and not really there either so let's put it up here oh wow okay so that's where the noise is coming from it's being generated and radiated right from the the face of this monitor okay so let's go back to our very insensitive uh, one inch loop I'm gonna switch back and I'm gonna make some passes here we're gonna see if we can figure figure out where it's coming from um, there's all sorts of noises coming out of this monitor, but the one that we're interested in is that one with all the spiky patterns there. So we'll zoom back across here. Okay, so up here, yeah, there's something there. Let's go back and forth until we find... Okay, so there is. There's a really... And you can locate... I can tell you with pretty, pretty cer good certainty that the switching transformer is located right here considering the fact that you have no signal this at this distance okay go over here there's nothing there over here there's a little bit there but the most sensitive part is right in here okay and I, once again I'm gonna look at the video cable is there anything on the video cable well there is something there but it's not our noise that we're looking for in this particular case and on the AC cable there's nothing there either alright so pretty much I'm fairly confident that the noise is coming right from the magnetic field in that transformer so how can I prove that well if it's a magnetic transformer let me go back to the uh, actual receive antenna okay and now what we're going to do is we're going to fold down the ham cam mount and I'm going to switch over Let's see if I can do this no I don't want to start a FaceTime I just want to start a camera I'm going to switch over to this and we're going to go to video okay that's about where I where I want this where I want this to be. So I'm going to shut this camera off and I'm going to go to the ham cam and talk from there. Oh, and the other thing is, this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be rotating um, the monitor around. And what's that changing? That's changing its perspective to the loop antenna, which is sitting, uh, you know, across the room a little ways. All right, you can probably even see a little bit of it now. But all right, so I'm going to stop this camera and go to the ham cam. All right, looks like we're recording now. And let me turn on the sound here so that you can hear this. Okay, it's like kind of like what you would expect, right? Let me turn it down a little bit. I'm not sure how much volume I really need on this. Okay, so now I'm going to rotate the monitor. I am not changing the antenna. I'm just rotating the monitor because if there's a field inside here, there's likely to be sort of a dipolish type pattern, which means there's a couple of nulls in it. So here we go. I'm rotating the monitor to my right, and you'll be you'll watch the noise floor. Drop, drop. Okay, there I have it. I have it nulled. Now, yes, there's another big gigantic uh, carrier in there. That's something else. Um, let me bring it back again. And what I'll do is I'll move over to a, a little bit better place to see just this noise. So we'll move there. Now I'll peek the antenna. Um, it's unfortunate you can't see the estimator here. Let me try to fix that. Hmm. Maybe I can put a little block of something up here so that we'll be able to see the estimator at the same time. Can we still see the noise floor? Yeah, so much for that idea. <coughs> One second, please. Once I get this in position, it'll be... All right. So now you can see that we have uh, a minus 92 there. 
Um, watch as I rotate. Okay, minus 97, 100, 110. Okay, now I'm 180 degrees out right there. That particular noise is almost completely gone. That's roughly a, a 30 dB null. Um, now I'll move the cables. Essentially the signal is not changing. That's the video cable and the, and the uh, power cable. Now I'm going to rotate back around again. So imagine, oh, that's the other camera shutting off. Imagine, if you will, that you're trying to listen to a station that's at 507 kilohertz, and that's all you hear is that. Now I'm going to just shut the monitor off for a second, and you'll hear the audio in the receiver. There it is. It's gone. Turn it back on. Okay, and now I'm going to rotate. Actually, I'm going to rotate in the opposite direction and see if it's the, if it's if the same thing is true. Okay, so I thought that was kind of interesting. So, just placement of the monitor in re in respect to the antenna can be a really big deal in, in listening to uh, some of these lower frequencies. Let me move up to 530 or 540. Let's see, 540 is, is right here. Uh, let me peek the antenna. All right, there's a little something in there that you could hear. But during the day when I'm tuned to 540, this carrier over here, well, you can't see that, can you? Um, well, you'll have to take my, granted, it's right, it's right off screen here a little bit. Maybe I can, okay, that's 540, but watch what happens when I go to null that noise out. If I actually had a signal there, you'd have a good copy on it right now. And again, you could just see how much that drops off. So what I guess the thing I'm saying is, don't be afraid to, to move your monitor around. If you've got some noise coming out of the monitor, and in this case, there's not much coming out either the video cable or the power cable. It's all coming out of the monitor itself. Now, this noise will decay at a very rapid rate. So if this antenna was uh, another, say, 6 or 8 or 10 feet away, this noise would almost be non-existent. But maybe that's not possible in your shack. And again, I haven't changed uh, the orientation of the antenna. I'm simply changing the, uh, the orientation of... <clears throat> orientation of the monitor itself with that, you know, the ham cam out in front. So one more time, I'm going to go clockwise... We'll call it clockwise. Okay. And now we'll go back to peak. Although you're not seeing it on the S meter because I'm not. We'll do that one more time. Peaked up on this, on whatever this frequency here is. Some of these setups are pretty difficult to do. Okay, so I'm peaked up on it. It's a minus 75. Now I'm going to go clockwise and see what we can get, what we can drop it to. Okay, minus 102, 105 or so, it depends. The noise floor in here is, is pretty high. This is no preamp. Okay, so that's 90 degrees away from the loop. That's perpendicular perpendicular to the loop and we'll go the other way and we'll finish up this video and here we go we're almost there starting to go into the null now I think it's hard to see for me tweak it back and forth all right if anybody found that interesting I would appreciate some comments um, if you can subscribe, I would appreciate that too. You can go back and look at some of my other noise videos. Um, 
Let's see. Let me bring this back. And mute mute the sound. Um, what else was I going to say? Oh, and I'm 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 just curious. Um, I'm going to try uh, some battery chargers and some other things that have typical switching power supplies in them, and see if orientation to an indoor antenna uh, might be of, of some advantage. Now I don't know if if you're using an active antenna inside, is the same thing going to happen? Maybe somebody could experiment with that and find out. So that's the end of this video. This is W1VLF. Please subscribe if you can. I really would appreciate it. It lets me know that someone at least has uh, some interest in these videos. 73 for now. W1VLF. I'm out.